What China is doing today is very different than the United States, and we need to look at it. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. I want to get into what China is doing. I want to look at what's happening with the different statistics that are seriously adding up to more headwinds in our direction. Let's go. I wanted to start the video off by taking a look at China. China should guide rates lower to support growth, former central bank official. Do you hear the talk of this at all? all in the United States? Of course not. They're looking at actually increasing rates or tapering the balance sheet. And here in China, they're suggesting the exact opposite. So we had seen the credit impulse from China, basically the amount of money being lent out by the banks, and that had been declining. And as soon as it hit the negative territory, that was officially a moment at which we need to start paying attention. I talked about that back in April. I showed you multiple videos, in fact, and it is very clear and distinct that that is a great warning indicator of a deflationary or correctionary period. Now, today, we see this. China should guide market interest rates lower to support economic growth and ease funding pressure on local government. If you go down further, if you see what they had to say, it's interesting to say the least. Reasonable rate cuts would help create space for the PBOC, the central bank, to tighten policy if needed in the future in order to cope with an expected weakening of their particular currency. You go down and it says it's necessary to keep liquidity reasonable and sufficient and guide the rational and moderate decrease of market interest rates. They expect the growth to be slower. So how do they get it to that level which they want it to be? That's why it's a balancing act between interest rates and, of course, what they are expecting. Nobody really knows what the effect could be in the short term or especially in the long term. But certainly this is what they're trying to do. And I just find it interesting because it's the polar opposite of the U.S. We'll see what happens. The great reflation trade is buckling around the world. Plunging bond deals reflect the souring growth outlook. So we have to look at the bond market for what it's telling us. We look at the stock market. And of course, we have to see all the different policies that are put into place, whether it comes from the fiscal or the monetary, basically the government, or it's coming from the central bank side. And all of this together really sometimes paints a different picture. And that's unusual. If you looked at, you know, when I talk about the SKU index, Right now, it's wacky. It doesn't make a lot of sense when you see what has happened in previous times, when, let's say, 2017, where everything was understood it was moving in this direction. 2018, it was moving in a very different direction. Okay, Plunging bond deals reflect this souring growth outlook. As you can see, it just shows you tech stars return. NASDAQ outpaces the Dow as reflation trade loses steam. And that... Blue line is, of course, the Dow Jones, the white being the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ has performed extremely well, particularly since May. But I wanted to give you a little bit more of a description, if I can uh, find it in here. You know, it shows you here. The cross-asset picture suggests that investors increasingly see the days of the so-called reflation trade in the rearview mirror. After surging economic growth resurrected value shares in the first half of the year, peak growth warnings have surfaced while inflation expectations, which once rattled the tech sector, tech shares, have cooled. I mean, I, uh, <laughs> what? I mean, that's funny. And, you know, investors should do whatever they want with their money, but it's not even true. And they're also saying here, hawkish noise. So not even hawkish Federal Reserve, not hawkish policies from the Federal Reserve, hawkish noises. That's, I mean, come on, man. From April to May and into June, you saw a lot of peaking economic data, and that is reverberating across assets. These things are still growing, but the rate of change is decelerating, and the markets are pricing that in. Well, of course, you had extremely known low numbers of everything back in early 2020, and then they surged upwards. So when you're looking at things year over year, it's distorted. 
but you got to see it, you know, maybe compare it from the year before. What are the prices we're paying right now? What is happening previously and what's happening today? And you start to really take that into account and not just look at individual statistics like the U3 unemployment rate. Of course, you're going to see a mixed picture there. I mean, it's, it's crazy what they do. And as far as I'm concerned, it's all on purpose, but some people don't want me to talk about that. Apple shares surge to record high as rally picks up steam, just like all of the other tech shares. You know, it's funny. You look at the antitrust lawsuits, they're, you know, there's scandals. None of these companies ever seem to go down for a long period of time. Oh, invest in good companies today. Most people don't know what a good company is. Good company means they know about it. They purchase from it. That's all they know. But you look at this particular company, no doubt it has performed extremely well. Now that they make their own chips, this gives them a better handle on you know, what's happening here. They don't make all of their own chips, but certainly when you look at their new laptops, when you see what's going on in their phones and their iPads and so on, they have more control over the supply. That also means if they're not buying externally that they're able to most likely profit more. So this is a company that is strong for many reasons. I get that. But we just need to understand why this is all happening. It doesn't matter that they have the M1 chip. What matters is that the central banks are buying their shares, are looking at you know, the interest rates being low, the money printing. You know, To be specific about the, the Federal Reserve, they're buying Apple's uh, uh, corporate debt. So they're bailing them out in that respect. But you see other central banks, whether it's a Swiss National Bank or whatever, they buy up these shares. Okay, and you look at it from every single level. I mean, when you have this cheap money and this cheap debt, it allows companies like Apple to do share repurchases, to buy back their own stock, and that pushes the price higher. That's the reason why. That's the reason why. Now, I want to see how much time I have here, but I wanted to touch on this. This was sent to me by a subscriber on the Insiders. Are you on the Insiders yet? If not, come on. You got to be on the Insiders, all right? It's really important. The Insiders is so, so key more than now than ever before, okay? The moneygps.com. New 95% mortgage scheme launches. This comes directly from the UK government website. A new government-backed mortgage scheme will help first-time homebuyers or current homeowners secure a mortgage with just a 5% deposit. The housing prices, should I remind you here, are at a record high. Record high prices, and you've got just 5% down, that's a long way until that mortgage is paid off. That's not good. People should be asking themselves, why are the prices so high? Not what can we do to afford it? Hey, hey don't increase interest rates because that's going to make it impossible for me to pay that mortgage. Instead, we should ask, why is the price so high? Nobody wants to do that, though. This is just talking about the shortages this particular patio furniture uh, area here, you know, they get into all the details. Essentially just saying that they have an entire shipping container coming through. It's got $100,000 worth of furniture. And they've already been selling it to people and it's been stuck in Long Beach. I think that was one of the most, if not the most, uh, busy uh, one, you know, one that, that is available today. Okay, I've seen a bunch of different statistics, but it is always, you know, one of the top three anyway. But this just gives you an idea of what's been happening, never seen anything like it, and so on. These problems are still going on, and as a result, the stores, they don't have the inventory, people are waiting, they want to get this furniture, obviously. I think it's probably, probably a, a little bit too late now. Here we are in July. This is a crazy one. Talked about this before. Mannheim used car index is absolutely off the charts. Used cars are an asset. Did you ever think that that would be the case? A used car? But that's where we're at today. This continues to rocket higher. 
commercial real estate. Take a look at this. Estimated value declines by property niche since February of 2021. Senior housing, skilled nursing, lodging, gaming, student housing, all of them down you know, 30 plus percent in a short period of time. The value of these things doesn't look so strong. And as a result, you've got investors, you've got financial companies, and of course, the people that are directly connected to it. And that's never a good sign. This I just found interesting. Welcome to Zuckerville. Facebook is developing its own city near Silicon Valley, headquarters complete with 1,700 apartments, a supermarket, hotel, and new offices. So if you want, you can check it out for yourself just to see what it looks like. You know, one of these futuristic places and so on. And everybody lives in harmony, singing, Kumbaya, my lord. Okay, and this is what they do. They're all being able to basically create a way in which you've got everybody locked in to this one society. They stay there, they work there, they play there, they're never allowed to leave. Might as well put some, um, you know, fence or a gate or bars around the thing to prevent them from ever, ever leaving. Now, they just show you everything that's supposedly going to happen here. All I want to note was down here, the fact that, you know, this is not the first company to do something like this, okay? And they mentioned, one of them I noted was the Hershey Company doing this back in 1909. So it's not the first time this has happened, but I just think it's just something interesting of note. I'm going to end the video there. If you are not already on the Insiders, you've got to do it. The Insiders is my way to connect to you directly. I email people every single day. People email me every single day. I will send you the video of the day and you're going to be able to get that information directly to you. Because guess what? There's always, always a new purge happening. They're wiping out channels left, right, and center. I'm on the alternates as well. But I want to be able to contact directly to you because it's fragmented. Okay, that's what happens. Some people are on this platform, some people are on this platform. But if I've got your email, you and I are connected. Okay, so sign up for free at themoneygps.com. I'll put the card up here, or you can just go to the Money GPS and get it there. Of course, it's totally free. And if you haven't done it already, hit that thumbs up button. All right. If you haven't seen this video yet, you definitely want to check it out. Click it, and I'll see you there.